believe that the knowledge, experience, and insight of low-income young people needs to be integrated into policies and programs designed to improve the conditions affecting them. The members of this council have faced and transcended those conditions and risen into positions of leadership. They have deep knowledge about what enabled them to do that as individuals. What needs, therefore, to be expanded and funded for more young people, as well as what obstacles and injustices still need to be addressed and eliminated. Okay, the recommendations for the former criminal justice system, I'm going to introduce my um, fellow council member here, and he's going to tell a little bit about his experience. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Nadine Daniel Jr., and I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. To stay on track with the talking points of criminal justice reform, I want to concentrate on providing continuum of mental health and substance abuse services to meet unmet needs of court-involved youth and their families, including diversion and reentry services. As you consider reauthorization of the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act, which is celebrating its 40 years of reform. <laughs> Let me explain why I'm so passionate about not only reauthorizing, but expanding this act. In 2006, I was arrested for trafficking cocaine and burglary second down body. And in 2009, I was granted parole. <laughs> One of the hardest things one of the hardest experiences that I went through post-incarceration was finding employment on my own. I remember one example was when I went to Chick-fil-A. I filled out the resume, I, I mean, the application. I put um, my criminal history, history on it. And it was going real good. I was never scared of work. It was going real good until we got to the criminal history part. And when he saw it, when he saw my history, he told me, and I quote, uh, hold on to this application and we will get in contact with you. How are you going to get in contact with me if I got the application? <laughs> <laughs> so, with that being said, it made me want to do something that got me locked up in the first place just to get by, just to get money in my pocket. But my, I remember my voice, uh, I remember a statement my mom said to me, to do the same negative thing over and over and look for a different result is insanity. <laughs> And I did not want to go back to those conditions. Um, so with that, I met, my pastor introduced me to my mentor, um, Pastor Larry Bratton, who introduced me to Sustainability Institute Energy Conservation Corps, which is funded by AmeriCorps, which is under the umbrella of Core Network. With this training, they gave me training to be a weatherization tech. And in a, in a short story, what a weatherization tech does is they go into low-income homes find out which, uh, how we can retrofit the homes to help them save energy bill, uh, money on the energy bill. Um, one of the houses that I did, the biggest house that I did, they had an energy bill of $600. We, we were able to reduce that to $200 a month. That's, that's extra $400 to buy medicine for their kids, food on their table. Um, so, when I heard about this program, I went full force. This it wasn't only a job, but it was also a career move. Because I can still, without a, a, a private industry doing this type of work, I have the knowledge to, to, to do, be my own entrepreneur, be my own business, and my own boss. Um, so when I was introduced to this program, I went full, full, full force. Just I attacked it because I, I saw this as a safe chance, and that's exactly what I was looking for. I graduated at the top of my class. I helped my girlfriend graduate, and I also helped my best friend graduate. Not my boyfriend, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and from my success in that, uh, they nominated me to be 2012's co member of the year. Out of 33,000 people, only six were chosen. Who knew a guy who just got out of prison for sale of cocaine would be one of the six chosen for co member of the year? Doors didn't stop opening then. Uh, National Council of Young Leaders was started. From, from each um, nonprofit organization, they chose two. Who knew that a guy who kicked out doors to steal petty chains that's going to only last me a week could be part of a council who's talking to Congress people 
congressmen and women about changing the reform of our, um, reforming our justice system. Uh, AmeriCorps gave me that opportunity, Core Network gave me that opportunity, and I'm so grateful that they gave me that opportunity to, to change other people's lives. Now, I, um, as alumni of AmeriCorps, I am now fully employed by the Sustainability Institute in Charleston, South Carolina, where I train the guys to do the same thing that I did. And there are the same kids and youth and young adults that are going through the same things that I went through. Uh, breaking the law, trying to get a dollar, selling drugs, um, just all kinds of just craziness. Uh, and also, other doors started to open for me. Um, who knew that an uh, ex-criminal could be the youth director of um, National NAACP uh, Charleston chapter, which I just um, accepted. <laughs> so as you can see, national service works. It gives us opportunity, it gives us re-entry, and it gives us second chance. Also, in November, the Department of Juvenile Justice will partner with the Sustainability, so we will be getting 50% of our members from the Juvenile Justice Department to come in and work and train under me and the Sustainability Institute to continue to do the great work that we're doing. That is what Second Chance and Reentry has done for me. Not only reauthorizing, but expanding these programs can give the same opportunity to a lot more youths who can relate to my experience. So we recommend that you give us the opportunity to be defined by our future works and not be defined by our past mistakes. Thank you.